Christopher Solomon is a somatic uh, salvia guide, a teacher, and an inventor of a pipe that aids in the mindful exploration of salvia divinorum, which I'm guessing we'll hear more about tonight. Um, he's worked with salvia for over 10 years, and he's been guiding group and individual salvia sessions for over five years now. In 2020, he took his guiding on in salvia sessions onto Zoom, which means that he can now work from the comfort of his home. And if you work with him, you can work from the comfort of your own home. His main goal in this work is to teach people how to use salvia for themselves in a manner that is supportive, informative, and empowering. He has a BA in psychology from the University of Texas at Dallas and received his training in somatic psychotherapy from the Hakomi Institute of California during a comprehensive two-year training certification. Without further ado, let's jump in. Yeah, that, that sums it up pretty nicely. Thank you. Um, and, you know, I will say when I when I compare the training I got from my psychology undergrad versus the training I got in my somatic psychotherapy training, the somatic psychotherapy training is just um, so much more on point with generally with expanded states of consciousness, but specifically working with salvia. Um, so... As if a raise of hands, um, has anyone here experienced salvia? Or who has experienced salvia here? So a few hands have been raised, some yeses and some noes. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is um, generally the low doses only works wonderful philo so yeah one of the things that i will be talking about quite a lot today is the difference between high and low doses and how low doses make salvia such a more um, manageable and approachable and gentle medicine now when people hear that salvia can be a gentle medicine and they haven't experienced that before they think are you out of your mind because when i smoked salvia i got ripped out of my body and I got turned into an inanimate object and I was a chair for a thousand years and one can have these very very bizarre uncomfortable physiologically uncomfortable dissociative experiences on salvia um you know it's not as if it's a cozy dissociative state where you feel like you're all wrapped up in warm there can be a kind of coldness and harshness to it sometimes if you don't approach it correctly and I will also talk about as well how to go into the deeper realms of salvia space in a way where it is more comfortable. Um, but, you know, just a bit of a, a background for, with myself. I, you know, in high school, I smoked some salvia and I noticed that it was um, kind of meaningless, didn't really make much sense. Um, I didn't really see the value to it. And um, then a few years later, I tried it again. And again, it was odd I felt like there were maybe some other presences in the room with me but I kind of felt like I was being flattened or pulled and again it was just like a weird tactile sensation um and just lasted a few short minutes but it was um after experiment experimenting with it for a while I realized that when I meditated before I smoked salvia it was a completely different experience and um, it really opened up my eyes to the fact that this medicine particularly is, it's important how one approaches it. Because when I meditated beforehand, it was the same dose as I'd had previous times before. Um, so it wasn't necessarily dose dependent. It was the fact that I dropped into my body just a little bit first before going into the salvia space. But Going back even further than that, I'll, you know, just define what salvia is. Essentially, there are over 500, there's almost a thousand uh, different types of salvia. Um, the common sage that you cook with is salvia officinalis. Um, the sage that you use for um, smudging, that's a type of salvia. There's, um, they actually just reclassified rosemary uh, in salvia. So um, I don't remember what it was, but now rosemary is um, salvia rosamundus. Hmm. And um, so it's um, it, it's a very uh, broad uh, category of, of plants, and many of them do have healing properties as well. Sage tea is very good. Um, there's a red sage, um, salvia, I would never pronounce it correctly, mysorrhizia, it sounds like that. Um, but that's that's used a lot in Chinese medicine. And um, so 
at some point in plant history in the Sierra Mazateca mountain ranges outside of Oaxaca, the there was this seemingly new type of salvia that just emerged and they haven't really been able to tell whether it's a hybrid of other types of salvias it's it's quite interesting because it only propagates by taking cuttings and propagating it like that and then replanting it so it doesn't really um spread very much by seeds it's rare that it gives seeds and when it does give seeds it has about a one or two percent germination rate and so there's in a way, if, if you want to cultivate salvia and if you want to spread salvia over your landscape or over your garden, kind of forces you to get into a relationship with it. You have to take the cutting, you have to make sure that the cutting roots correctly, and then you have to replant it. And that's um, a metaphor I like to lean into when I think about cultivating a relationship with salvia and how we cultivate a personal relationship with salvia. It is not, generally speaking, just a one-time experience that you're going to have and um, get the answers to life's problems. Um, you know, I know with, you know, mushrooms and ket and um, sometimes ketamine and MDMA as well, one can have a very big and beautiful mushroom experience, MDMA experience, and you think, gosh, that there were all these revelatory insights that I got, and it was so beautiful and amazing, and now I understand. Um, salvia, it's more, um, it demands you to go back to it a few times, and you kind of have to make a practice with it over time. Generally, when people have their first initial salvia experiences, they are quite archetypally similar. People have an experience of um, being taken to a sort of cartoony village. There's an experience of feeling like you're a wheel or a pages of a book busy turning. Um, it's quite common to feel as if reality is maybe just on a 2D piece of paper right in front of you that could easily be crumpled away and tossed aside. Um, but as one continues to use salvia over time, it moves away from those archetypal common experiences and it goes a lot more into a more personally relevant and personally intimate experience. So um, oh, one thing I will say as well, if at any point anyone has any questions, you can raise your hand or if you would like, you can type some questions in the chat and, and I can answer them as well because um, I'm, I'm open to this being a discussion as well. But, you know, it was it was um, a multi-year process before I actually started to recognize that salvia could have any sort of particular benefits. Um, like I mentioned before, there was the time that I smoked salvia um, after meditating, and it was a simple meditation. It was just 10 slow, short, deep breaths. And on the 10th inhalation, I inhaled the salvia, I held my breath, I exhaled, and what was so different about that experience was, um, one, I got visuals, which I hadn't gotten visuals before, and um, there was this veil of reality that was put over my, my vision, and it looked like I was sitting in a desert with sand dunes with the sun rising and setting simultaneously. So that caught my attention because I was like, wow, this is interesting. This is the same dose and the same batch, so I, I, knew, I, I knew exactly what I was smoking, and, um, but yet I'm getting visuals. And then out of these visuals, the, a few feet in front of me, this feminine being materialized. And it, it looked like she was sort of made out of magnetic lines. She was about, you know, five or six feet in front of me to the left. And, um, you know, she materialized. And I said, oh, there you are. Rather than saying, wow, an entity, what the heck? Because I I'd also never had an entity experience before. I, I didn't even know that such things were really possible. Um, but there was such familiarity with this presence. And it began to communicate with me telepathically. And it said to me, yes, I've always been here. And then it just proceeded to wrap me in what felt like love and smiles. It, it was almost like um, it extended like a ribbon. And the ribbon was wrapping around me. And I was making eye talk contact with this being, and it was just very nourishing. It was very supporting. It was very calming, very reassuring. And again, the sense of timelessness, like, yes, I've always been here. It was, yes, I was here before you were born. Or also as well, there was the sense of 
I was with you all the times you had accidents that, you know, because I was run over by a car really badly and I had clinical deaths as a baby as well because I was very premature. And there were all these um, life events where I, I could have died, but there was this sense of like, I was there as well for all those things. And um, like, I got your back, you know? And so it was, it was interesting to be, communicated with telepathically because it was more of an emotional communication more so than a verbal communication and this quality of salvia to be able to communicate with oneself from a physiological level from a somatic level from a non-verbal level is also what makes it very good for doing somatic therapy and introspection because one can um, get bigger ideas in chunks and have a deeper understanding of the feeling and the emotion behind the idea versus just the mere words. And so it can go quite a bit deeper. Um, and so I was like, wow, that, that's, that's interesting. That, um, and then everything faded away. The, the feminine entity faded away and I was back in my bedroom and, um, and I thought, well, that, this is interesting. You know, then every time I smoked salvia, I met other entities and I started to meet different characters. And there was almost this um, um, uh, different dimension where these entities exist. And, you know, and this is quite a common archetypal experience for people to have where they smoke some salvia and they get taken to salvia land. And it feels as if they are almost late to something as if they're getting to salvia space and they're like oh in the middle of a parade that's happening or there's a movie that's being shown and they have to go see the movie and so oftentimes there's this sense where these entities are ushering along ushering one along and they're saying come on come on let's go let's go um there's this excited welcoming nature that can happen to the to um, um people when they smoke salvia and so when people have these brief experiences they think oh well okay I smoked some salvia and it lasted for a few minutes and it was weird because I felt like I was being invited to a carnival but what does that mean you know what do I even do with that you know what what sort of um what 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 lesson does that have for me and so what I like to say is rather than trying to analyze your salvia experiences to where you're trying to get meaning from it, so much of the benefit from salvia comes from sitting in the experience at the in the in the moment and you know asking yourself the question and recognizing, well, what is it like to feel welcomed and invited? And you pause for a second and you think like, well, you know, how many, how many times in my life or my day am I actually enthusiastically invited to something or enthusiastically asked to join something bigger than myself? Um, so, you know, that that's just like a, a small example of how the sitting in the present moment with Salvia is where a lot of the medicine is. It's It's less about revelatory insights and it's more about thinking like, gosh, wasn't that nice to feel like I was a part of something? And wasn't it nice to feel as if there was enthusiasm about my mere existence? You know, I mean, if, if you think about, you know, how, when one's a baby and everyone's like, hi, baby, you know, and it, everyone's like, ooh and gah, and how, what a nice experience that is. Um, you know, unless it's like the auntie with too much red lipstick that kisses your face all over and pinches the cheek too much, you know, there's some limits to enthusiasm. But um there's um we don't often get experiences like that in our day-to-day -day life anymore and so that that's just one small example of of um how to interpret some of these experiences but there was this other particular experience that i had on salvia where um i smoked it and i put my um mind fold blindfold on and i had my earplugs in and um because I thought, well, what's it like if I'm in complete darkness? What colorful landscapes am I going to see? Now, one thing that happens is um, there can be an amnesiac effect to smoking salvia. So what can be quite uh, disconcerting sometimes is people smoke salvia and then 
they forgot that they've smoked salvia. And um, the change in one's reality can seem so objectively um, just pure that one thinks, well, it's not because I smoked salvia that my reality has changed. My reality has just changed so drastically because that's just what's happened to me. And um, so, because when one smokes the concentrated extract, especially if one doesn't know what one's getting into, you can, you one doesn't realize that such a strong experience can be had from such a tiny amount of material because salvia is the most um, potent naturally occurring hallucinogenic substance that, that there is that we know of. And um, you know, only one milligram of salvinorin A is enough to have an uncomfortably strong experience, and, and which is not very much. And um, so, you know, you smoke this little bit of salvia and then you forgot you smoked salvia and all of a sudden your reality has just changed dramatically and you think, you know, something broke in your brain or there's, it's quite common for people to think that they broke reality by smoking salvia. And then there can be a lot of guilt that accompanies that because they think like, oh no, like I just destroyed the world. I just, just I destroyed reality as we know it. Now, that's quite a common experience. So um, this, this inability to discern what's going on for oneself versus other people can be quite common with salvia. For example, you know, I've never taken LSD and for a moment thought that someone else could see what I was seeing. You know, I, I've never taken LSD or mushrooms and thought that they too are witnessing the same distortions in, in vision and perception. But with salvia, it's, it's such a objective level of reality that you think, well, surely this other person is also experiencing this. And, um, but in this one experience, I smoked salvia and I'd forgot that I'd smoked salvia, but I'd also forgotten that I was wearing eye shades and I'd forgotten that I had earplugs in as well. And I didn't have any clothes on because I wanted to do sensory deprivation. And so I forgot that I had clothes on and um, I got very, very confused because one minute I was in my bedroom and the next minute I just ceased to be, I just didn't exist. And because there was um, no frame of reference, if I moved my head left or right because I was in pitch blackness, there was nothing for me to anchor and nothing for me to ground to. And um, so the only logical conclusion that I came to was that I'd killed myself. I was like, oh crap, I, I, I smoked salvia and it did something to my brain and I'm dead. And I remember getting very angry at myself that I'd killed myself. And then I got very concerned about, oh man, my mom and dad, like, and my sister, this is terrible. Like, and who found my body, you know? Did, and then, then I got embarrassed. I was like, well, that's embarrassing to be found like naked, like next to a bong. Um, and, and then my apartment door was locked. So did they have to wait for a smell to come out of the apartment and then bang the door down? And all these thoughts are going through my mind. Um, but with salvia, time dilation happens as well. And so time can either seem to speed way up or slow way down. And what happened is I started going through you know, every second started to feel like a week. And I was like, oh, well, by now I've had my funeral. And well, by now my dad's getting up in his age. So he's dead by now. And by now, and every second time is getting exponentially faster and faster. And I was like, well, by now, everyone I've ever known is dead. And by now, the sun's exploded and the earth no longer is, exists. And so I, I just kept going further and further outside of time and outside of space. And um, But there was still very, very um, clean awareness, which is something that is quite interesting with salvia. When I compare salvia to ketamine, for example, is ketamine can give me some, a little bit of um, fuzzy headed awareness. Like the thoughts are still there and I can still engage with the medicine. But I, I noticed that with, with salvia, it's just a more of a clean feeling of awareness. There's, there's not that heavy, um, you know, well, it's not an anesthetic for one thing, even though it is an analgesic, it is a painkiller. Um, but 
one thing it's very good at doing is stopping the monkey mind chattering in your head um, and stopping the dialogues that are actually not your own narratives. Many times we think we have self-speak, which is our own voice talking to us, but a lot of it was put in there by other people or by certain formative experiences that we had. Um, and Salvia does a very good job of helping you parse out what is their voice and what is my voice and what is my true authoritative voice that is my 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 um my i am awareness that exists in in lieu of everything else so in this death ex near death experience that i felt like i had with salvia um you know everything was taken from me my identity my history my my the universe, time itself, um, but there was still a voice that could think, and there was still an I, and there was still an awareness in there that was able to um, perceive what was going on with quite a lot of clarity. And what happened was then I became, a, I felt like I was a grid in a piece of graph paper, and that grid was representative of Christopher's consciousness. And next to me was another grid and there was another grid and another grid. And every grid, every block of the grid was another being that had at one time been alive on Earth or will be alive on Earth. It was almost like this grid of souls and um, that have been incarnate or have yet to be incarnated. It was almost like a, a grid of potentiality. And within each grid, with each in square was a soul of potentiality. But what was happening was that this grid it was a 2D plane. It was busy moving through space. And as it was moving through space, that's what was creating time. And it was leaving a trail behind it. And the trail that it was leaving behind it is what creates this space-time reality. And so now I don't know if it actually works like that, but you know the experience was that I was essentially on the edge of reality that was being created i was on the ultimate now moment and the now moment was moving and um then the grid, grid lines dissolved and i became all the consciousness conscious conscious eyes i became all of them and um so then it was just me and that became lonely funnily enough felt very very lonely because when i was the grid of con consciousness connected to other grids of consciousnesses I was at least felt as if there was some sense of other around me. But when I was everything, there was no more other, and there was only me, um, or only everyone or everything. And I remember feeling very, very isolated. And um, and then what happened was this, this big grid kind of elongated to where it became a long rectangle, and it kept stretching out until it became um, a line and then once it became a line, it started to vibrate and became a wave. And that was the peak of the experience where I was just a vibrating wave of only me consciousness. Um, but it was outside of time. It was outside of space. It was eternal. And I realized, oh, this is this is what I've always been. My, my true form is this vibrating wave. And um, But there was a lot of sadness to it because I really missed having a body. Um, and I really missed being able to relate to other human beings or to, to anything, really. Um, I missed having the ability of um, being able to exert my own volition, my own will over anything. Like the thought of raising my hand, were like, oh, what I wouldn't give to be able to have the ability to raise my hand. And um, so that was, there was just, ultimate loneliness and then after that I just felt myself kind of like a comet coming back in and within a couple of seconds I was just thrown like back in my body and uh, I remembered I had a body and I took the blindfolds off and um and it was well it was confusing because it was a lot of elation because I thought thank god I'm alive and I have a body um and at the same time it was funny because all those consciousnesses that were in the grids, they were all in my apartment with me. 
So it felt as I as if I was with the entire universe. It was, there was me and all those other entities and all those other spirits and beings and souls were in the apartment with me. And the reason I say it was funny is because I'm not a body shy person, but I didn't have any clothes on at that time. And I felt really embarrassed because I was like, wow, this is really vulnerable. I am completely naked in front of the entire universe. You know, I mean, it, it takes the dream of being naked in front of a school or shopping mall to the whole next level. And um, so I was like, oh, man, I, you know, so I, I went and I put some pajama pants on. I was like, sorry, everyone. And um, and then th that kind of faded away. And I um you know, it was funny, it was only about six months later that um, I had the thought of, I'm, I'm not a necessarily a, a religious person, I, I didn't grow up in a religious household, but it reminded me of, I was like, that's sort of analogous to the Adam and Eve story, where they ate from the tree of knowledge, and they got some ultimate truth, and then they realized that they were naked in front of God, and they got embarrassed, and then they covered up with a fig leaf. Um... So, you know, again, it was only months later, I was just like, oh, wow, how about that? I, I got some ultimate truth right there. And then I got embarrassed by being naked in front of what seemed like many gods or the distillation of the one unification of God into many beings. And, um, but that, that, that actually kept me away from Salvia for a year and a half, almost two years. I didn't want to go back to it because it honestly scared the hell out of me. Um, even though it was profound and it was one of the most meaningful experiences of my life, um, it was also downright terrifying. And um, and then I I found myself being in the state of paradox, you know, because I was like, okay, I know that there's this plant that I can engage with and have beautiful meaning experiences with and have loving entity presences and showered with love. And then there's also the fact that it might make me think I've killed myself. And um, so I changed my approach to where I started to see, okay, what is the minimum amount of salvia that I need to smoke in order to achieve any sort of change in my perception at all? And so what I started doing is um, I was using um, salvia extract. And I should talk as well about what I mean by salvia extract. Um, so salvia, it's just again, a green leafy plant, and it just looks like your reg regular, regular garden variety plant. And, um, and it, it blooms occasionally um, in the fall, and beautiful uh, purple flowers, and they, they smell quite nice, actually. And um, so you, you can take either the fresh leaf and stack them on top of each other and roll it up to make like a quid. And you chew that. And this is the way that it's done traditionally in the Sierra Mazateca mountain ranges. The Mazatecs um, chew salvia that way. And you chew, 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 chew. And you hold it in your cheeks. Um, and you have to hold it in your mouth because salvia doesn't get absorbed in the stomach. And so it can be quite cumbersome. Some people don't like the taste of the leaves because they're quite bitter. So you can either chew the fresh leaf or you can dry the leaves and you can chew the dry leaves, which is even more bitter, um, but it's more accessible to get dry leaves. And with that, the experience comes on in about 15 to 20 minutes and you slowly go into salvia space and you spend more time there and it's more gentle. One can still chew too much and have some oh shit moments where you think like, oh, oh I've, I've gone a little bit too far. Um, it can, if you make a tea out of it, um, that's very, very weak, but it's very good for dreaming. Um, if you drink the tea before bed, it really kicks, kicks up your dreaming. Um, if you do make the tea, I'd recommend adding a little bit of cayenne pepper to it because that opens the capillaries in the mouth. And when you do make the tea, you have to, um, swish it in your mouth for about a minute and then swallow and then take another tiny little sip, swish it in your mouth, and then swallow tiny little sip. So it takes you a while to get through the cup. Um, but again, it's extremely bitter. Um, add salt as well, because um, salt cuts out the taste bud's ability to taste bitter. Um, and so, you know, when I make salvia tea, um, 
because it's very good for insomnia as well. And you can just drift off to sleep with it. Um, you know, I add salt, I add honey, I add um, a little bit of cayenne pepper, and that makes um, <clears throat> that makes it bearable. Um, but there's also um, the smoking method, where you can either smoke the plain leaf, um, or you can smoke an extract, a concentrated extract. And the way a concentrated extract works is you will take, say, 10 grams of leaf, extract the salvinorin A out of that. Salvinorin A is a psychoactive uh, component in it. So extract the salvinorin A out of that, and then put that back onto, say, one gram of leaf. So you're taking 10 grams worth of material, putting it back on one gram. And that's that means you only have to smoke a very small amount. So <clears throat> when I work with my clients, you know, I... I send you all the supplies you need. You know, I send this pipe that I'll show you as well. And I send pre-dosed gel caps of 10X salvia extract. Um, it's salvia I grow myself and I extract it myself. And I, I like to be very um, intricately involved with the medicine making process because um, it also makes dosing um, very accurate. It, it can be... I've gotten salvia from other suppliers before and they say that's 20x, but that's not. Or you get 5x, but it's a lot stronger. And um, many times when there's like an ex crude extraction process where you can make a lot quickly, but um, kind of leaves you with a headache. Um, I kind of go a bunch of extra steps just to make it, the, you know, just the most pure, clean um plant that one can get and um so with that i had some salvia extract this was a few years after my scary um death-like experience and what i started to do was um i just started to smoke one flake of extract you know i sat there and i smoked one flake and i sat there and i closed my eyes and like mm, no i don't feel anything from that and i was like okay so then i put one more flake in my pipe and i smoked that and I kept doing that until I realized, oh, okay, maybe four flakes, I begin to feel something. And um, and what I realized as well is when I went to these very minimal light dose experiences, I had um, what it brought on was an extreme sense of calm. And I just felt like I was in a very deep meditation. I could have been in an activated state. I could have been anxious. I could have been stressed about things. But then I smoked just this little bit of salvia. And immediately this wave of calm came over me. And what's nice about it is it's not a groggy, muted calm. It's like if you take like Xanax or something like that, you're just like, boom, like everything's brought down. Or if you take an opioid um, or a painkiller, you know, it's boom, everything's really brought down. And um, it's that's more numbing. But these light doses of salvia are actually quite engaging. So you can engage with your body from a comfortable place where your awareness is clean and pure. And you can, and this is where it's good to do deep, introspective, insightful work. You can ask questions to yourself. You can ask questions to Salvia and you can start to communicate. And, um, but what, what I noticed was, you know, I would smoke a little bit of Salvia and then I'd want to go a little bit deeper. And so then I'd have to kind of break my concentration. I'd have to break my meditation. I'd have to get my tweezers and get a few more flakes. And then I'd have to do some accurate dosing. And then I'd have to smoke again. And it, it was frustrating that I was uh, having to break my mindfulness um, in order to repeatedly redose. And so I got this idea while I was on Salvia. Um, you know, I thought like... And it's almost like it was Salvia's idea. I don't really actually want to take full credit for it because it felt like a thought that was coming from someone else or somewhere else within me. And it was like, hey, wouldn't it be great if there was this pipe that existed that had multiple bowls that you could preload beforehand and then you wouldn't need to break your concentration? I was like, oh yeah, that is a pretty cool idea. And then I kind of forgot about it and went on with my life. And then a few months later again, I smoked some Salvia and hey, wouldn't it be cool if there was this pipe that existed? And every single time I smoked salvia, this was like the only thing that came to mind. And it was getting so frustrating that um, I just went ahead and built the damn thing. And so um, so I make this five-bowled water pipe. You see, it's a 
silicone down stem right here. You put a little bit of water in the jar, you pop it in there and you preload all your bowls. So you put a little bit of salvia in each one of the bowls and then you smoke, smoke, smoke. And then when you're ready to move to the next bowl, you just pick the bowls up and rotate it and move to the next one. And then you can smoke that. And so you can just cycle your way through. And this gives you a lot of agency and control as far as the timing between your doses, how deep you go into the experience. You, you can really start to um, experiment quite a lot with um, accurate dosing. And as well, it gives you um, some psychological peace of mind because when you know that each bowl in and of itself isn't enough to have a big experience, you're not necessarily scared of each one of the bowls. And so you know, okay, I'm going into this to where I know that at the peak of this bowl, it's going to be manageable for me. So having that bench work, that, that, that benchmark framework where you know like, okay, now what can happen is if you put the bowls too close together, if you smoke and then only wait a minute and then move to the next bowl, then you can be like, whoops, I've gone a little bit too far. So, and that was another um, misconception about salvia. When you would look at salvia online on, on Reddit's like um, on Arrowhead or DMT Nexus or Shroomery or, you know, these are all older forums that were popular in the early 2000s as well. And um, Reddit wasn't really around there. Then. And um, so this misconception was that you had to smoke a lot of beer and you had to smoke it all at once and you had to use a torch lighter. And if you didn't hurry to the experience, rush into the experience, it wouldn't work. Um, and I, I don't know why that was became the narrative that everyone said, you know, and, and it's still a, it's, it's still out there. Uh, people are like, oh, you have to use a torch lighter and you have to smoke it all at once. and um, there was this myth that you, you couldn't take your time with salvia. Um, but what I realized is salvia is much better if you actually take your time. So, you know, when I work with clients, you know, I send the pipe, I send the salvia and we smoke a bowl and then we wait at least five minutes. And with that first bowl, you just kind of wait and see what arises in that five minutes. Um, sometimes people will feel a calming of the mind sometimes they'll feel some slight pulling or pushing sensations um it's quite common as well to feel like you're not feeling anything but what one actually is experiencing is profound stillness and silence inside and that's actually where the medicine is you're like yeah, actually what you really need to be doing now is resting you don't need to be out there looking for some big experience and colorful landscapes and stuff like that. What would benefit you is to go to a place of deep, still rest where it seems almost as if nothing is happening. But once one can tell, oh, you know, there's a very distinctive rest that comes with salvia and it can be very comfortable. And this is why at light doses, it makes it an excellent meditation aid as well. Um, one can just smoke one bowl and really let that launch you into a meditation. And you can easily sit there for 45 minutes on just one bowl sometimes. And funnily enough, it actually makes being still feel very pleasurable. And it makes um, uh, being silent very pleasurable. And it makes it easy because there's this time dilation thing that happens. So you can easily sit there for 20 minutes and think that it's only been a few minutes. Um, now then, if one wants to go a little bit deeper, then you smoke a little bit more, and then it becomes more of a engaging with the movements that are arising in your body. And this is where it becomes more of a somatic medicine, where you will feel um, maybe specific areas of your body will just be quite, um, you will be alerted to them. You're like, oh, you know, there's a, I'm noticing there's a, a lot in my shoulder, or um, there's a lot in my low belly. And when one notices those things, that's a very um, gentle invitation to essentially, um, you can use that as a framework to think, okay, these are areas where salvia is bringing my awareness to. And so now when I have my non-salvia meditation, when I'm just meditating regularly, maybe I can place my awareness on this area. 
you know, for example, I was doing a session with someone and um, he felt his breath going very, very deep down into the bottom of his stomach, like almost like to his sacrum. His breath just went whoop down and he almost felt his bottom area like at the base of his abdomen kind of like opening up like a balloon and just receiving the breath. And it was it was a different way of breathing for him because I didn't know this at the time. And he he told me afterwards that he has trouble taking deep breaths. And he feels as if he's always such a shallow breather. And so he was like, well, how do I, you know, he was thinking to himself, like, how do I get my breath like down to the bottom of my lungs? And what Sylvia showed him is like, well, you can kind of go further than that. If Why don't you just focus getting on your breath to your tailbone instead? And um, it just gave him a, the experience of feeling the breath effortlessly moving down there. So it was different than him breathing and trying to get the breath into his body. It was more of a relaxing his being and just letting the breath naturally go there. So um, there's, you can get instruction like that. Um, and again, there's also an active approach and a passive approach to salvia. Um, initially, when I do some sessions with people, I, I say start off by taking the passive approach and just let salvia figure you out. You know, salvia, I think about it like just data collection and, and taking inventory. And salvia is learning about you and you're learning about salvia. Um, there's the experience of seeing what is it like for me to feel salvia in my body and what is salvia's experience of me. So it's definitely a, a co-creation. There is a sense of um, rather than just sitting back and letting the experience happen to you, um, you can sit back and be with the experience and engage with it in such a way where you're not necessarily getting in its way and it's not getting in your way. It's very much a, a meeting in the middle. And that, that's a com common theme that comes up with salvia as well. I think of salvia as being a really great neutralizer. If you're up, it'll bring you down. If you're down, it'll bring you up. So it's very good at just getting one to a place of homeostasis. And many times people get this message with salvia where they say, okay, I've kind of I've come in there and I've, I've cleaned everything out for you and I've gotten you to a nice stable baseline. Um, you know, for example, like I was working with someone who was feeling very, he, was, he used the word besieged. He felt besieged by work and by his client caseload. And there was just, you know, all these things, you know, no matter how much self-care he was trying to do, he couldn't help but thinking about his clients because he was a therapist. And um, just this constant pressure of just like, ah, oh, my work and my everything and life is just all right here in my face. Um, and what Salvi is very good at is giving one a sense of spaciousness from one's obligations in life and just giving one a felt sense of objective distance from one ex one's experiences. And with that felt sense of objective space, you can kind of catch your breath. You're like, oh, okay, I'm here. This is where I exist. So it's very good for grounding and rooting yourself back into your core being. And from this core being place, you can see how everything else around one is um, or all the obligations one have in life have has in life um, aren't as big as the essence of one's own being. So that gives one a sense of feeling greater resources as well, because you think like, okay, well, here I am, and I am this big psychic being, and there are other things in life that you know. I thought this, I thought this conversation with a coworker was the main thing taking up my awareness, but I can see now it's only this very small thing. And they they talk about that a lot in trauma therapy as well. The goal is not to minimize the trauma within the person. Um, or the goal is not to minimize anger or whatever emotions we're feeling. It's not to minimize those because by trying to minimize those, what, what we're actually doing is a form of self-violence where we're not giving the, all the parts of ourselves the space that they need to properly and openly express themselves. 
So rather than trying to rid oneself of the parts of oneself that one's annoyed at, it's much more helpful to make a bigger container. So relatively speaking, you know, if you think about a marble, unless you have a marble in a small container, the marble is going to take up most of the container of the space. And from the standpoint of the container, it is all marble. But then if you take that same marble and you put it in a really big container, you know, that that same substance and that same volume and that same, that same marble doesn't really take up as much internal psychic energy and psychic space. And so this, this process of coming back to oneself being grounded and then feeling as if one's in a, a place of spaciousness is very good at um, recentering oneself at a nice, stable homeostasis baseline. But then, you know, what Salvi oftentimes communicates is okay, so, and this is where the work and the integration comes in. Now, uh, we've I've gotten you back to this stable baseline. Now it's it's up to you. I can be here to help you. But you have to get engaged with the process. What are you going to do in order to maintain this nice, clean, fresh start? Um, how are you going to, um, you know, for example, if one has a big dose of salvia and you feel as if everything's been erased temporarily, and then you come back into a brand spanking shiny new body, you're like, all right, this is actually a really great new start for me to start over. So I can focus on my nutrition. I can, you know, maybe just start to eat a little bit more healthily. I can be mindful about what information I let into my body. This is another thing that's quite common with salvia is um, <clears throat> information and thoughts become very tangible on salvia. And so th there's, um, you know, I, me and my, myself and some other people as well, we've gotten the experience quite a few times of feeling like I was in Salvia space and I noticed all the junk thoughts that were floating around my head. And I was like, this is a junk thought that I got from seeing something online, or this is a junk thought from an old conversation of someone that I don't even know anymore. Um, or this is someone else's idea. And so many times with Salvia, one can get the message of Hey, be very selective and be very mindful about what you actually let into your awareness and what you let into your consciousness, because that takes up literal psychic space. And on Salvi, you can feel the space it takes up. Um, so you 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 can feel your energy being, and you're like, wow, there's this thing right here is this stupid meme I looked at even. You know, all this random nonsense that's just kind of filling our heads at all times. Um, it's always like, hey, be, be mindful about, you know, what relationships you let into your life, what words you let into your life, um, what foods you let into your life. Um, but at the same time, there can be this sense of ease and effortlessness that comes with salvia, to where um, one gets a sense of, you know, it is actually quite within my capability to do the things that I know I need to do with myself. Oftentimes that brings up the question, you think like, oh, well, there's so much conflicting information out there. You know, how do I know what the right thing is to do? Like now they're saying spinach is bad or they're saying eggs are bad, you know, and what, what am I supposed to believe? Um, and so with salvia as well, when you meditate with salvia, one can very quickly get to, um, you know, there's, there's been a few experiences where people come to, come to salvia with a question and they'll actually feel Salvia getting annoyed at them. But Salvia is like, come on, you know the answer to this. I know you know the answer to this. Like, and then you're like, oh yeah, of course I do know. And then you do know the answer. Um, but there's this sense of um, one's intuition becomes very clear. And um, it, it makes it uh, quite, um, again, effortless. There's there's no waffling back and forth. There's there's no pros and cons. There's no like, oh, do I do this thing or 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 this thing? All of that's kind of like taken away and you're left with like, oh, that's the right, that's the right path for me. So I'll be very much as well about also what is happening in the moment and what is the very next thing you have to do. It, it, there's a very much a, just focus on the next thing. And um, 
it's less looking back at your past and your history. Um, you know, there have been some times when I was trying to understand something that happened in my past and, you know, process the emotion of something that happened to my, my past. And, you know, Salvia came in there and she, you know, she recognized what I was trying to process. And um, in a very loving way, she was like, man, like, I'm really sorry this happened to you. Like, that that sucks. That's that's really shitty. And that was really painful. But it also doesn't exist anymore. It's in the past. And so it's no longer real to you. But it is still living in your body. And so let's just take it out of you. And so there can be this, this ease at which Salvia kind of um, does its healing. You know, many times people think there has to be like gnashing of teeth and purging and all these big things. And oh, and then I had to have this big confrontation with my shadow and redo this thing. And Salvia sometimes comes in there and she's just like, nope, let's just, okay, done, next thing. There's, there's almost like this, almost Mary Poppins energy sometimes in a way, like, all right, let's just fix fix things up which also makes it very good for integrating other plant medicine experiences and other psychedelic experiences actually if you've had a if you've had a a challenging 5meo experience or challenging ayahuasca experience um even if you conceptually understand it it can sometimes kind of leave your body feeling quite rattled i know for example there's a particular ayahuasca experience that i had that was fantastically healing and powerful but it left me really um somatically unsteady for days and i was just crying like all oh, at the drop of a hat i was just sobbing and um and it got to a point where it was sort of concerning i was like jesus when is this gonna end like i'm crying all day and and i understand why and but i i don't know what to do to integrate this and um it was, it was getting to the point where it was just really like um exhausting really and i just felt like there was no no end no, no depth to it and um so i smoked some salvia and salvia came in and she kind of looked around and she was like oh well no wonder you're feeling like you do like it's kind of a mess in here like everything's all over the place and i felt her taking aspects of my ayahuasca experience and putting them in order chronologically so she's like okay so this lives here this lives here this lives here. And what it felt like is I felt like I was a deck of cards being shuffled into order. Um, like I was all jumbled up and like prr, shuffle, 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 shuffle in order. And this was just in the span of about four or five minutes. And um, she was like, all right, well, we're done here. And then she kind of like left. And then I felt very grounded and uh, very resourced. Um, you know, for that same reason, I've noticed that Salvia can be very good at working with grief because um, grief can be also quite an untenable um, experience. It can Grief can be very all-encompassing. Grief can seemingly have no depth, especially if it's over, you know, grieving of a loss of someone or something that was very dear to one. And um, I noticed that with, with grief as well, it, um, it, very quickly, just again, brought me back up to this this baseline of neutrality. It, it was it was quite interesting that um, I so I used salvia for grief after my dad passed away. I was very very close to my dad, and I was luckily able to be by his side when he passed away, which was you know I'm very happy that it, that it was able to happen that way. Um, but I was just like oh like he's gone, you know, and all the grief that comes with that. And um, it had been a month or so after his death, and I was still feeling a lot of grief. And um, I smoked some salvia, and I felt salvia just taking my grief away. She came in, and she took my grief away. And the interesting thing about it was when my grief was no longer there, I was like, oh, no, that was that was too soon. I wasn't done grieving. Um, and it actually made me... Um, I got concerned then because I was like, whoa, no, 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 like th there's still sweetness in the grief here. And now I just feel normal and I shouldn't feel so normal and so okay 
after having, you know, lost someone that's very close to me. And um, so it was a beautiful lesson, actually, about the sweetness of grief and the beauty of grief. And, you know, what I what I came to realize was, um, like, isn't it lucky that I can have someone that I loved so much that I can grieve over? So there was, it really, it re really re reframed my relationship with grief. Now, when I feel grief over something, I'm like, ooh, this is, this is great because this is a sign that there was some juiciness there. You know, this is a sign that there was some meaning there. This is a sign that it was something that was very personally relevant for me. And isn't it nice to be able to feel something personally relevant, even if it's surrounded by grief and sadness? And um, once I got that lesson, though, then, then the grief over my dad's passing did come back. And um, it was, um, but it was nice because the grief was kind of like titrated back into me. You know, it wasn't like a waterfall of grief just coming back in. Um, it was just like, okay, there's some grief. And I was actually excited for the grief. I was like, hallelujah, grief. You know, I'm I'm not like a robot, you know, I, I can actually feel these feelings again. So it actually made, um, made uh, quite a wonderful experience with that. I see uh, Jade is asking, um, what kind of doses am I using for integration work? For integration work, um, oh, so th so that's kind of interesting. Um, it depends on how I'm needing to integrate the experience. So I'll I'll give to like two concrete examples. Um, I had I don't know this was maybe about a year ago. Um, I had a, um, I tried a substance called a 3-MMC, which um, it's it's sort of MDMA-like. And um, so I had some 3-MMC and, um, and there's quite a few therapists that I've heard of actually that are now using it in the, um, in the underground psychedelic scene. Um, so, um, but I used some 3-MMC and then after that, I did a booster with some MDMA and then, because I, I was with someone, and essentially the long and the short of it is, I just did quite a few substances that night, and it just absolutely wrecked me. I was like, the next day, I was like a shell of a person. I was a huge zombie, you know, because um, everything was depleted, you know, because it was a night of hours of bliss and peak experiences. And then the next day, I'm just like, God, I can't even, you know, I was emotional and I couldn't even get out of bed. And then, then it went crossed over into the next day as well. I was like, man, I'm just a husk. I really felt like a husk. And um, so I thought, well, let's see if Salvia can, Salvia can help out with this. And um, so I, I smoked one small bowl of Salvia. And by small bowl of Salvia, I mean about eight milligrams of 10X extract. Um, and so I smoked that and didn't feel anything. I was like, huh, weird. So then I smoked another bowl and didn't feel anything. And I smoked six, seven bowls and just, I wasn't feeling any of the salvia at all. And I was like, gosh, this, this is quite interesting. Like just the salvia is not working. And, um, but what, so I was like, well, no point in like keeping going further and further as well, you know? So I stopped at like the sixth bowl and um, but I just kind of like sat there and I, I meditated for like another 10, 15 minutes. And then when I kind of like when the 15 minutes was up, um, I kind of came to and I realized that Salvia actually had been working, but it was working on such a deep level. And I just felt better afterwards. My energy levels, um, it was almost it was interesting that it was it was it wasn't perceptive or it was imperceptible at the time how much it was actually helping. And so it was it was doing the work, but I wasn't actually feeling the familiar pulling, pushing sensations or, you know, again, I just, if, if I had gotten that salvia from someone else, I thought it would have been bunk, you know, like, oh, this stuff just doesn't work. So that was that was an experience where I had multiple bowls and the multiple bowls did a really good job of just making me feel normal again. 
and I felt like I could, you know, get on with my day. I was still a little bit sleepy and it didn't like fix me right up, but it definitely fixed me about 70 or 80% up. Um, just feeling okay again and, and not like a husk. Um, and then I noticed after that, like an hour after that, I could feel more of my regular emotions coming back in and everything just started to slowly come back online. Um, but then when I did the integration with after the ayahuasca experience, that was just one bowl, one small bowl of that same dose of about eight, eight to 10 milligrams of 10X extract. Um, so it sort of, um, you know, this, this is something as well that I've noticed when I've used salvia for healing physical illness. So salvia is very good at boosting one's immune system. And I actually use it instead of antibiotics. Um, and so salvia affects the kappa opioid receptors in your brain, which is intrinsically tied to immunity as well. There's also <clears throat> something called a it's a, it's a type of terpene. It's a tricyclic diterpenoid, which is in salvin RNA. And that's also useful for boosting immunity. And um, it's also very good for intestinal inflammation. So if you have any sort of stomach problems um, or menstrual cramps as well, um, or food poisoning, or just swollen stomach in general, salvia is very, very good at that. And they've done research in... Um, the tricyclic diterpenoids specifically for intestinal inflammation. And it seems to work wonders for that. As well, the, the Ciromazotex, the Tecos, the Curanderos, they use it for swollen stomach as well. Um, it's, um, uh, is it good for gut motility? When you say gut motility, you mean just um, like increasing digestion for helping just clear move things out? Generally not, no. Um, but it does. Um, it other people as well notice that it it is it does act as a diuretic, um, where you can pee a whole lot more. Um, and I've noticed as well that when one smokes salvia, one's urine is very very clear for during the salvia experience. Um, just without doubt, without fail, it just becomes like water clear. I'm not sure why that is. Um, that can make it a little bit annoying when you're doing the chewed sessions because you want to sit there and like meditating, but then you kind of have to get up and, you know, go to the bathroom and pee a whole bunch. And um, it's not like that with everyone, but that, that does seem to happen. Um, but I've noticed when I've used it for um, illnesses, um, sometimes if I'm like really under the weather, the similar experience happens to where I don't feel the effects of the salvia, um, like the salvia effects don't show up, but it still fixes my sickness and it still boosts, boosts my immunity. Um, there are other times when you can feel salvia interacting with your sickness. I had the flu one time and I smoked salvia and what I felt was salvia um, kind of located where the illness was in my body. And I felt it crumpling it up like a piece of paper. It like crumpled it up and it threw it away. And then it was like, oh, there's still some more in there. And I felt it crumpling it up and it threw it away. And it just kept on doing that time and time again until it essentially just tossed out all this, all the sickness. Um, and then I felt way better afterwards and my fever was gone and my lymph nodes were no longer swollen. And um, so that's that's another time where one can recognize that salvia works quite quickly and, and, and quite pragmatically. And um, and then as well, there's um, a lot of parts work that can be done as well, where you can um, communicate with different parts of your being. Um, again, telepathically, you can communicate with your stomach, you can communicate with... Um, uh, different historical narratives that you might have had as well. Um, and I, I can get into slightly more detail with that as well, but I see Olivia has raised her hand. I would love to hear more about that. Um, well, hopefully this question will be kind of fast. I was just wondering if the somatic uh, training and education you did came before or after you started working with Salvia. Just mm. kind of wondering what your inspiration was for that and how you began to tie the two together. 
Right, right. Yeah, thanks. Um, so definitely I had a lot more um, salvia experience before I did my somatic therapy training. And, um, you know, how the somatic therapy training actually arose or, or what pointed me in that direction was um, I was, this was some years ago, I, I was doing a fair amount of ayahuasca quite consistently. And um, I... I felt like I was ready to start working with salvia with people because I'd had a lot of personal experience with it. And um, <clears throat> I was sitting with ayahuasca one night and salvia showed up during the ayahuasca experience. And um, I was like, salvia, what are you doing here? You know, I didn't know that there could be crossover between the, the two medicines. And um, so it, it, it was quite interesting that, you know, salvia was there and then ayahuasca showed up there as well. And Salvia and ayahuasca were both, they kind of teamed up. They felt like two sisters teaming up. And what they said was, hey, you think you're ready to start to work with people during doing this medicine, um, but you're not. And how unready you are, we're going to show you how big we are and the energy that you're actually working with. And they both proceeded to get absolutely massive just in, in infinity directions that they got huge and within that infinity there was a very palpable vibrating energy that i could feel as well and and they were like kind of like hey listen up like do you do you, re do you recognize that this is what you're getting into this is the kind of work that you're getting into this is the energy that you're going to be involved with with people and it's no joke and you know you don't you know you don't mess around with these things you don't go into this in a light-hearted manner um because if you do start to do work with people now at your current stage stage in your development you're going to damage yourself you're you're not going to be able to stay in your own seat you're like this is risky for you and um so you know, that really like you know kind of put me back in my place i was like okay i'm definitely not ready um, gonna listen to what they say because they weren't kidding around. And um, <clears throat> so I was asking the the ayahuasca shaman who who guided the ceremonies that I was going to. I was like, you know, they told me I'm not yet ready, so I'm I'm wondering what what should I do to get ready. And um, so he was the one that suggested somatic therapy. He said, when you're working with people in, in these states, you're working on. You know, archetypal body you're not working with the logic mind necessarily um so he was like you know regular clinical psychology it's not necessarily going to get one as much benefit than somatic body-based psychotherapy because you have to get good at being able to work with people in the present moment with what is arising as it is as it's showing up um but in no way am I putting down clinical psychology practice or anything like that because it's extremely valuable as well and has a lot of benefits. So um, I definitely have respect for that field as well. So I, I'm not poo-pooing anyone or anything. Um, but so then, so then I started, you know, learning what I what I could about somatic therapy, um, and then I learned about the Hakomi Institute and. That same ayahuasca guy, actually, he he mentioned, um, he was like, well, you're here in California and the Hakomi Institute, they have a very good method of working with these expanded states of consciousness, um, even in non-medicine space, but also in medicine space as well, it's very applicable. And what was interesting is when I started doing my somatic psychotherapy training, so much of what I learned in that training, I was like, Oh, so that's what they that's what they call this. And this is so much of what I experienced in Salvia, I I learned about in the somatic psychotherapy training. I was like, oh, okay, this is the psychotherapy speech for what Salvia was teaching me. So it was almost as if Salvia gave me a really, really good initial experiential understanding of what I was going to be learning in somatic psychotherapy. Um, you know, I was also still pondering this question um you know how to get ready for helping people guide people on salvia experiences and um it was another ayahuasca experience and i was looking at a tree during the experience and 
the question came to mind of, you know, how do I, you know, how do I get ready to help people with this powerful healing medicine? And the leaves of the tree said to me, they said, teach. And it was just that one word, teach. And I was like, whoa. And then like, it was like a light bulb moment went off. And then they, they kind of, then they started to speak to me more and the rest of the tree started to speak as well then. And it was kind of letting me know, like, you know, before you, before you um, go any further in this, you need to start teaching people about salvia, become a salvia teacher. And only once you start teaching, then it's going to naturally lead to the next progression of working with people. So then I just started giving lectures. You know, I was still living in San Francisco at the time and I went to herb stores and I was like, hey, can I give a lecture on salvia for you guys? And they were like, sure. And um, and then as I was giving the lectures, then um and then I I was doing the lecturing at the same time as the somatic psychotherapy training. And then from there, you know, someone came up to me after a lecture and they were like, can I have a you know guided session with you? And um, and then it just happened organically over time. And, you know, generally speaking, I've, I've just been building my practice with clients very organically over time. I, I don't do much marketing, actually. I, I don't really put myself out there too much. Um, I just like to let, let, um, let the process unfold as it unfolds. Um, and again, there's also the educational component with salvia as well. Like everyone wants to do ketamine. Everyone wants to take mushrooms. Everyone wants to take MDMA. Um, but you say salvia and people are like, oh, hell no. Um, so there, there's more of an, there's a lot of education that has to happen first before people feel like, oh, wow, this, this is something that a medicine that I can approach slowly, gently, uh, gracefully. It doesn't have to be scary. And it can also have pragmatic application in my life. So um, does salvia quite the amygdala the same way MDMA does? Right. Um, I don't know what effect it has on the amygdala, but it does quiet. Um, I don't put it this way. I mean, there is. Um, it's more so about with salvia, there can be such a sense of neutrality that the thoughts and the experiences that one has had in the past are not necessarily good or bad. Um, you know, MDMA might be better at reframing things in a positive light. Um, but with salvia, it's just like, hey, this is what it is. And how are you going to interpret this? You know, I was working with someone recently and um, his entire salvia experience essentially, well, not the entire, it was just main, mainly more in, in the third bowl. He noticed this paradox come up and the paradox was um, that he felt everything in his life at the moment in salvia space was insignificant. There was a sense of insignificance and meaninglessness. Um, and he was like, well, this is interesting because it's like the things that Salvia is telling me are insignificant are my life's work. And they are the decisions I'm trying to make about where to live next. And they're, you know, all these things that have happened to me in my past. And um, but what what was interesting was there was still value in the experiences and there was still value in his life, even though there was insignificance. And so rather than them being insignificant, there was this message of, hey, everything isn't as weighty, doesn't have to carry so much weight, and it doesn't have to have such a strong effect on you. And there's actually, if everything's insignificant and meaningless, that's kind of great because that's that same theme of being at the blank slate, because then you can be the one that ascribes meaning and significance to your own experiences. So that's very much the, the theme of the, the generative aspect and being engaged with um, the Salvi experience. You know, for that same reason, Salvi is very good at um, doing um, creative visualization of how you want things to be in your life. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm personally not much of a positive affirmations kind of guy. Like I've never really put like post-it notes saying like you're loved all over the place. And um, that just, I'm like, ah, I don't know if I really believe those things. And, but what's interesting is with Salvia, um, because it's bypassing the thought ego part of the brain, um, it makes it really good for positive affirmations and really good for visualizing on a very concrete, pragmatic level. You can have your salvia meditation in the morning where you smoke a little bit of salvia and you just visualize exactly how you want your day to go in as much detail as possible. And not only that, you can visualize how you want yourself to feel during those experiences as well. Like, I'm going to feel like I'm full of joy and happiness and I'm going to feel resourced and I'm going to feel as if even the difficult tasks are oddly enough enjoyable. Um, and so it, it's very good at then just like setting the stage to kind of get one, you know, get one moving. Again, that's that same theme of moving forward in life with Salvia. Um, another thing it can be useful at is going back and reimagining experiences that you had in your past but imagining them having turned out differently. So you can, let's say there was something, oh, let's say you were bullied when you were younger and there was an, one event that you, you know, someone kicked your lunchbox, for example. And um, what you can do is you can, with Salvia, you can be meditating and you can reimagine the scene as, in as much detail as possible. But then when you get to the scene where the person came and was an ass, you can reimagine something different happening, like you ran away or they didn't come at all. Um, and so you, in clear detail, you reimagine a different scenario. And then one can actually embody the feeling of what one would feel like had, had it gone like that instead. You can embody the feeling of feeling like you triumphed over the adversity or feeling as if um, you weren't picked on or feeling as if this conversation didn't go this way and instead this conversation went this way. And um, again, funnily enough, even though it's just a imagining exercise of something that happened in the past, because one's dropped into one's body on such a deep somatic level um, and because there's this um, progl pro proclivity for one's body to um, one's because one's thoughts are so concrete one's body kind of believes it a whole lot more as well and so then one can embody that feeling so um, so it's really good for you know future manifestation and imagining and past rewriting of experiences um, or one can just use it as just a, a tool purely to be sitting in mindfulness and silence and stillness um and I'll, I'll just say one more thing about there are quite a few experiences where um people feel as if they are having a consistent salvia experience happen over and over again they're like wow every every experience is the same but i was i was experiencing that similarly as well where like I'd had every time I smoked salvia, it was just the same experience over and over again. And I was like, why am I getting the same thing happening over and over again? And when I posed this question to Salvia, the answer that I got was she was like, hey, this is actually kind of cool. What else in life do you have that can give you such reliable consistency right now? Because so many other things in your life are kind of changing and in flux and all over the place. But you know, you can kind of take refuge in the fact like that um, you know what you're getting with me. You know, you know what you're going to get. So um, you can, that can be your stable resource place. Um, like deja vu, exactly. Right, right. Um, a question from Ginger. So many questions. I know there always are. Um, do you think Salvia is basically connection with? Yes, I do. There is this sense of being connected with one's essential self. Um, and yes, you can have my contact info. Um, I'll put it in the chat right now. Well, my website is salviahealings.com. And um, Christopher at salviahealings.com 
is uh, my address. But yeah, there's this, I was thinking about, you know, a tagline for my website one time. And I think one of the taglines that I had on an earlier version of my website was um, journeying with your essential self was actually what came to mind. So, um, and it's nice to be with one's essential self, especially when one is with one's essential self that is not marred by, you know, life experiences and so on and so forth. Um, and I see I've been yammering on for almost an hour and a half now. Um, so I don't know if there are any more questions that people have. Um, and if you do have any questions, you can definitely shoot me an email. I do um, free 20 minute consultations as well. Um, there's a little Calendly thing on my website where you can just go and um, um, book a time. And, um, and, and I also do um, online integration circles as well, um, which, which have been quite wonderful. Um, so Olivia, I don't know if, it, if I'm gonna be um, getting the people's contact information who were on the call. I don't know if that's okay if I get your guys' yeah. contact information so I can send you emails about when I have integration circles coming up. Yeah, um, this is a good note to kind of start wrapping up the meeting on. Um, and it seems like there's a lot more interest here. Um, I will be sending out like a link to the recording um, of uh, you know, our meeting tonight for those who uh, weren't able to be here. Um, and yeah, if people are all right with uh, having their information shared, that's fine. I mean, you are the presenter and people were interested. So if they have ability to have more resources from you, that would be great. Okay, good. Um, I guess if there's anyone on the call who doesn't want their information shared with me, can you give a thumbs down on the emoji thing? And then we can know not to share that with me. Um, I'm fine. I just yeah. want to know, have you ever on your journeys, like have gone into like the, it's like a village of like simple, humble people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So, okay. Thank I've you. Been... Okay. I just wanted to know, cause like, uh, it wasn't mentioned or I just had, I just wanted to know, just think, just, so that way, you know, I can ground myself on that, you know, because I yes. get there a lot sometimes. And they're yep. such a nice, calm, you know, they don't, it's a very comfortable feeling there. Uh, yeah. But, uh, thank yeah, you. They're just really wonderful beings. I've I've met them many times and it, it does exist. That, yes, that, it does. It, it does. does. It is there. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah um oh another thing um um uh, my uh my little my pipe my water pipe i left mm. it at a friend's and uh in another state can i is there any way i can get another one you can um okay. yeah if you um go to salviapipe.com i know it's not the most creative name for the product, but it does tell you exactly what it is and what yeah, it's Yeah, cuts to the chase. <laughs> uh, cuts to the chase, exactly. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, um, when I, I I actually actually won one on a uh, you know on Instagram, like you know, and uh, I couldn't believe how how awesome it worked. Woohoo! So, Thank you for that. Yeah, I'm 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 happy with it. Uh, since I was you know making it for myself initially, I was like, I'm going to make the best possible product I can because I'm going to be the one that's using it. And so, um, yeah, so I make them all myself um, and then I ship it straight to you and um, it works well. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, oh, great. Um, oh, Marion and Marco. All right. Yes, hello. Um, maybe... Uh -huh. Okay, faces to the names. Well, you can, uh, I'd be happy to hear an update on, you can shoot me an email on whenever you do your Salvia Dieta and what your experiences are like with that. <laughs> good, good. Well, thank you so much, Christopher. This has been such a good evening um, and I learned so much. Seems like everyone else has too. Great, fantastic. Yeah, thank you all for showing up. 
And um, yeah, I'm, I, I love connecting with people about this. So definitely shoot me an email and, and we can talk more about things. And I'll let you all know as well when um, I have integration calls, because those are quite fruitful and we have some wonderful discussions there as well. Mm -hmm. That sounds wonderful. Great. And yeah, everyone else, you can keep an eye out on our Synaptic Institute meetup page for future events and links to, you know, the humanity discussions that we'll be doing. All right. Thank you. This was great. Everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. It, 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 it's been a long time coming since I've been wanting to meet you. Woohoo. So. I'm glad it glad it happened. Yeah, me too. Like uh, you've answered already a lot of questions that I was like, okay, I need to know the answer. Really, you did. So thank you very much. <laughs> great. Uh -huh. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful uh -huh. evening. Yeah. Thank have a great so evening. Much. Good night, everybody. Bye.